What up nerds, Jared Santo here with Changelog. Today I'm going to walk you through our audiogram creation process. I think we do it a little bit unique and a way that I've grown to love. So I thought I would share it and hopefully it'll help you as well. So the first step in any clip production process is selecting clips. Now for that, I use Overcast. You can see here that I have uh, the JS Party podcast open. And I happen to know on this episode, we have a very nice clip right at the very beginning. We have a pre-roll quote from Faraz. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button here and click share clip. This pulls up Overcast's very cool clip editor. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Like it takes me a while to want to get there. And I'm very And here I can actually even see it. This is about a 17 second clip. Because I'm trying to get you can see in the waveform how it ends right there. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab the ending. And you can play that and hear the coin stab at the end. Click next. Okay, notice I do have it on audio only. I do not care about the video, but if you want to share right out of here, that's fine. We're going to create our own custom branded audiograms instead of using overcast so then you can preview it here i will share it to dropbox copy to dropbox and you can see i have a promotion folder it calls it overcast clip by default but i'm going to have a few of these so i'll just name it js for uh, J js party js1 click save and there it goes into my dropbox and i'm back to overcast i cancel out of here and if this were a regular session i would just keep listening to the episode and I would clip as many as I find interesting and go JS1, JS2, JS3, etc. Then when I'm back at my production machine, I open up my Dropbox promotion folder and you can see here I have a bunch of audio files just raring to go. I'm not going to do that JavaScript one today. I'll show you instead a clip from uh, an episode of The Changelog with Jessica Kerr. You can see there's actually four of those that I've created previously. And so I'm going to drag them into our audiograms folder and put them in the working directory just so I know these are the ones I'm currently working on and these are the ones that are finished and so on. So you'll notice in this directory, we have a Keynote file, one for each of our podcasts. And that's because we are using Keynote to create these videos. So we have that ready. Now let's go over to Keynote. I have our podcast Keynote file already open and you can see it is set up for audiograms. This is for a previous episode with Jason Warner, GitHub's CTO. So the first step when you start a new episode is to get the correct imagery and the correct links in there. The, this is not the episode we're doing. We are doing this episode with Jessica Kerr, the one thing every dev should know. And so I want Jessica's picture in there and not Jason's. I have downloaded it to my downloads folder already. And so what I'll do is I'll just hop over here and I will just download or I'll just drag that in for the title uh, slide and then also here I will replace Jason with Jessica and one of the great things about Keynote why it's so flexible and why I love it for this kind of production is I can have a whole bunch of stuff ready to go and I just hide the ones I'm not using so this is a great title slide in the case that we have a nice uh, picture of a guest or some sort of topic where we have a big image you want to share but sometimes you don't have that or sometimes it's just the host adam and i talking and so we have a secondary one right here where it's no image it's already set up to go and the same thing for these uh quote slides is here i have three and in this case here's a situation where maybe we only have one guest and so it, for js party sometimes we'll have four three five and so we don't have to create those each time we just hide them and they are ready for us. So the last step here, well, first of all, the, the outro slide, this is our call to action. I'm gonna change that to Jessica's episode number so that people go to the right place when they listen to the clip. And then I'm ready to go. So back over to my list of audio files. Okay, K1, I just worked my way down. So we're gonna start with this one. We drag it in over here. Now this is the documents audio settings. I didn't even know this was a thing inside of Keynote until I started researching it. But you can actually add a soundtrack to your Keynote presentation and then you can record it. And we're going to abuse that feature to create videos of these clips. So here's Jessica. I'm going to listen to that and then I'm going to have to get the text. So you're going to want to have transcripts. We have our transcripts open source on GitHub and they're all in markdown format. So this makes it really handy. I can just get clone the repo. You can see I have my transcripts repo open already right here. 
and this is the change log. So we call that podcast because that's our very first podcast. 398, open that up, and here we go. So I already got to the section that I know I'm clipping because I did practice this once. Actually, I wasn't practicing. I was testing in production and had a major fail, so I'm starting over. But now that you know the inside baseball, I am ready to go this time. So I will listen uh, to this. I will find is hugely helpful. the portion in the You'd transcript. Be how much you can see I have it there already. Stories, uh, make the names in the code make sense, for instance. Right. And then. And let me stop this for a second. So the way this works is I take the quotes, I separate them out one slide per line, and then I've also set up the file so that it's scriptable so that I can switch between the people talking. So that's a nice little aspect of these, whoever's currently talking is highlighted. And the way that works is that each image has a description and my Apple script will just match the description with the number on the line and will highlight that person. So Jessica starts and she's gonna say this and then Adam, sorry, she's position two, isn't she? Yes, she is. Adam's position one. So I will select all Adams and his, he only says, yeah, this whole clip. So that's all he's gonna get. And then we know Jessica is position two, so I'll select all Jessicas, replace that with two, hit enter so it's on its own line. And then there's Jared, that's me, uh, I'm position three. So I go three, enter, get that on its own line. So that's a start. And then my job is then to break these up so each line is a slide, but not everything we say it wants to be on one slide. Sometimes it helps to have it on two slides. So I'll often listen to it one more time and as I'm listening, I'm going to try to break it on places where either the person naturally pauses or I know that it won't fit. This takes a little bit of practice, but it's not too hard. Uh, getting the history of the system is hugely go. helpful. Yeah. You'd mm. be surprised how much those old stories uh, make the names in the code make sense, for instance. Right. And then you don't look at it and go like, God, who wrote this crap? You go... Oh, I see that yeah. previous circumstance that right. was a constraint that I heard about 10 years ago that I know they've broken it now and so I know it's okay to fix it now. Yeah, it's like every bad decision in code was a good decision that just didn't age well. Or <laughs> yeah. it aged out of its, you know, it's obsolete now. Like, well, that had a reason. Like, there's a reason that line is there. Uh -huh. It may look completely obtuse. It, it probably is obtuse to you. You have no idea why it's right. there. But the person who wrote it then, in, in the time, not that person now, that's a different person. Um, right. <laughs> but... But yeah, the, it made sense to them. It worked. Yeah. So. Okay, so I didn't have the whole clip, and I do know that she says in that in that in the time, not that person now. That's a different person. This is kind of an aside, so I'm gonna treat it as such. This is kind of like a little extra that you don't have to do, but it's nice. So you can say not that person now. That's a different person, and I don't like that semicolon there. Okay, but yeah, it made sense then. I'm gonna take the but yeah out. Sometimes I just kind of make these things look a little nicer. Get rid of that. You can dress this up as much as you like. Uh, here I say, yeah, it's like. Mm, I could probably just get rid of that. And here's a quote that I, it's really me talking, so uh, maybe just clean that up here. There's a reason there's a line there. It's probably a bit to you. So again, just a little bit of cleanup work. This looks pretty good. So now I'm going to copy all this, head back over to my keynote file, and I have an Apple script, which I can share if you're interested, which will basically just do what I described. I just have it keep bound to a keyboard shortcut, so I will just... Uh, invoke that and it is going to create a slide per line and select the right person. Isn't that magic? That's my favorite part. So now I'm going to review it. Getting the history of the system is hugely helpful. Yeah. Um, this is a little bit too fast, actually. Let's try it. We'll leave it. And I'm just going to look at it, make sure it all looks good. Like here, maybe I want to have not that. Uh, here we have like the start of a quote. Is this too small? So sometimes I'll try to shrink it, but in this case, I'm just going to take that off. 
I'm gonna take this off because it doesn't really matter if it's a quote. Make it look good. Every bad decision in code was a good decision, just didn't age well. Or it obsolete, so this must have been a typo in the transcript, or is obsolete now. That had a reason, there's a reason that line's there. It probably is obtuse to you, you have no idea why it's there. Get rid of that hanger, right. But the person who wrote it then and the time, not that person now. So here I'm just gonna like just try to make it a little bit nicer. I'm gonna have a capital, I should have two capitals. It made sense to them, it worked, boom. So there's your final slide, then we go to that. Now we're set up, so all we need now is a title. And I'll just call this uh, Jessica Care on the importance of knowing software's history. Probably not the best title, but I could come up with something a little bit better. Good enough for now. Okay, so we're set. This is ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and hit record. Now I'm set up to go, and I'm just going to listen and play it along. Uh, getting the history of the system is hugely helpful. Yeah. Mm. You'd be surprised how much those old stories uh, make the names in the code make sense, for instance. Right. And then you don't look at it and go like, God, who wrote this crap? You go, oh, I see yeah. that previous circumstance that right. was a constraint that I heard about 10 years ago that I know they've broken it now, and so I know it's okay to fix it now. Yeah, it's like every bad decision in code was a good decision that just didn't age well. Or it <laughs> yeah. aged out of its, you know, it's obsolete now. Like, well, that had a reason. Like, there's a reason that line is there. Uh -huh. It may look completely obtuse. It, it probably is obtuse to you. You have no idea why it's right. there. But the person who wrote it then, in, in the time, not that person now, that's a different person. Um, right. <laughs> but, but, yeah, the, it made sense to them. It worked. Yeah. So. Stop. Boom. There you go. So now we save that recording, file, export, movie. I call, I make them all 1080p. I save it to something like uh, Jessica Software History and let it export. Now, if I was doing all these back to back, I would then move on to K2. I would begin listening to this. I would go over the transcript. I would start to grab the right portions and be all ready to go as soon as this movie is exported, which it is now. It hits my finished folder, and you can see we have a very awesome audiogram with all of our own branding, our own sounds. Uh, getting the history of the system is the way we want it. Yeah. You'd mm. be surprised how much. And we can crank these out. All I gotta do is delete this, delete the previous movie, delete K1. Go ahead and just wipe all those out. They're ephemeral. We don't need them. They serve their purpose. I'm gonna paste right there again. Go back, grab K2. Drag it in, give it a listen, grab the transcript, rinse, and repeat. So that is how we create our audiograms. It took us a little while to figure out this flow. It's still not perfect. I'll probably improve it a little bit more, but it's working very well, and hopefully you find it useful as, as well.